everybody. Welcome to today's segment. It's John Paul Kersey. I'm back in action. And anyways, I'm here to talk about how I did this photo. I did this photo because I was like, hmm, I need to challenge myself. I need to get some motivation in my inner spirit. So I got some motivation in my inner self and I was like, what can I do that's different? So I was watching some videos on YouTube and some people were saying, oh, you could actually do a little video B-roll of a scene. And then when you do that video B-roll of a scene, then you can you know, take stills and then grab pictures from the video. And I was like, that is awesome. But what happens if I grab, you know, four pictures from the same video and then smash them together? And then when I smash them together, I come up with a, even a better, a better picture that has tons of motion in it. Because so many times on my camera groups on like Facebook and stuff or Reddit, I see pictures of product photography with, you know, an obvious chip thrown in or an obvious, you know, gummy bear thrown in or in my situation, it's a gummy bear or an obvious, um, you know, some type of product flying in the air, but there's no motion blur. There's no realism. There's no, like, there's no crunch to that bite. You know what I mean? Like it's just missing that oomph. So I decided to basically, you know, take a bunch of pictures slow down the shutter rule so I get a little bit of that motion blur from the video. And right now, I'm about to demonstrate how I took this picture and then combined it and then slew it all together, threw it together like, like your best friend's birthday party. And then next thing you know it, I got a wicked photo. So I'm gonna demonstrate and show you a step-by-step -step process on how I did this photo so you can try it at home and hopefully you learn something from it and you can come up with something that's magical because I love magical photos. Not so much fake, but not so much real. Little bit of magic because magic in photos is beautiful and I do love myself a magical photo. So I'm gonna throw some video at you and hopefully you can learn something. I'll walk you through it. So in this video, I used a mirror, cleaned it off, used um, a coffee filter to clean off the mirror. Then I used a white bowl to get a nice reflection, not too much of a strong reflection. I, um, I would suggest using a matte um, bowl because the matte finish doesn't reflect as much. I got a massive diffuser about uh, four foot um, parabolic uh, um, softbox there on the VL150 Godox and my um, uh, VL150 was turned at 75% power because um, the diffusion of the thing is so big and then I um, took a video so this is the snippet of my video. You can see it as it plays where I stopped and where I made cuts in the video. And I made those cuts because I can pick and choose from the cuts what pictures I want to use for the video. Um, so I made cuts. So if you look, one cut is one photo right there. It's one photo. It's my main photo I use. I love that. That sugar splashed. And then you can see the motion blur of the gummy bears and then I edited it. So I edited it, not like perfectly, but this is a raw 10-bit photo. So I edited it basically how I wanted it to start off. And then I ended up exporting the pictures as a TIFF file. So all you have to do is right click on the top right hand corner where the, um, uh, the adjustment layers are and stuff right there. You right click on that and then you go to um, uh, pick picture and then you have the option to select all pictures that are starting from the cut points. So you, I selected all the pictures starting from the cut points and then I exported them as TIFFs because TIFFs have the most information instead of a JPEG. You can do JPEGs, but TIFFs are way better to work with, a little bit more information to work with, and you can um, kind of edit them similar to RAW 
photos. So I there's my um, all my photos that I, I suggested and, and I got the photos from the start points of each cut that I made. And I made sure at each cut that I made, um, the photos were the ones that I want. So you can see how I selected the motion blur. Now this is in um, Lightroom. I brought them into Lightroom and I also cropped it down to size. Now some people would say, oh, you could throw that in Lightroom and merge them all together in a perspective, but it doesn't work that way. It didn't work that way for me, so this is the way I did it. I cropped them all down so when I can mash them all together, I can, um, you can see what I did in my next step, but see, I picked, um, let's see, I picked those photos on the bottom that I'm that I'm selecting, and these are the photos that I selected for my um, final photo. So I think I grabbed like five all together, and um, yeah. So there's the splash. That's my favorite photo part. And remember, these are all from a video. Like this isn't just, you know, these aren't real photos. Like I didn't take a photo every time. I selected them from a video. It's kind of smart in a way because you get to select the best shot and uh, I figured what I saw on YouTube I actually saw Gerald Undone do it and he selected it for his thumbnail and I'm like well why can't I select like five photos and mash them all together and make one sick photo that's a great way of doing it so I, I used a little bit of his magic and put a little bit of my magic in it and by golly it turned out pretty sweet so here's me in Photoshop. You can see what I did. I um, selected all the cuts photos and I dragged them into the, the picture. Now these are 4K photos, so I made it a little bigger than 4K, made the background white, and you can see how I'm slightly aligning them up but not lining them up perfectly. Um, You'll see why, and I, I, you can see how I did every layer, and it's kind of like, that's just how it is. Like, see how I'm lining it up? I'm lining it up so it's it underlaps, and then in my right hand layers tab, I actually adjust all of them so it goes left to right, so they get stacked. So the the one to the right gets underneath and placed underneath. And after I put it underneath, you can see how I stacked them so it goes under. So when it comes to the final product, you can see what I'm doing in my next move and how I stacked them. So like, look, see, I'm erasing the photo on top so you don't get that hard to find line because you naturally will, especially me because when I made my own preset in Photoshop, I had a slight vignette. So every photo that I added the preset to had a slight vignette. Vignette, um, but see, this is what I'm doing. This is a generic fast way. This wasn't the original photo. I redid it so I can show how I was done. Um, but by far, you could do this multiple times. You could even do it like ten times. There's other ways to do it, but I find it's really time-consuming. This is the fastest way that is just makes the most sense as long as you line up the pictures and the pictures has one exposure. Um, <clears throat> whether it's on a tripod or not you know you want it to look exactly the same that's why I say this is really good for product photography because you know you're not combining like eight photos of different positions from the camera you're just combining one position of the camera but multiple photos and you could do this a bunch of times and it's it's an epic way to do it so here's me um, basically stacking them the images so it goes under but the key thing is is in your layers tab you have to uh, um, profile them accordingly so you can put them under one another another kind of like a deck of cards you know see how I went over too much you know so you could make a wider um, crop in Lightroom if you wanted so you don't have that but see how I have hard defined lines that's due to me putting a vignetting in the preset and that's me kind of messing up there but you don't have to put a vignette. I just like working with vignettes because it adds a little bit more depth to the photo. But um, so yeah, I'm just getting rid of all the hard to find lines. I'm kind of blending the stuff together so you don't have this the hard to find line. And you'll see why I did that in the next step. Um, but this is the generic way of putting a bunch of photos together that has, the camera has one position. And I kind of just basically painted it 
so you can see that I'm getting rid of the part so it looks like I'm adding like there's one, two, three, four, five photos all combined there. And then it beautifully just makes one photo and I aligned everything up perfectly. And um, so this is kind of me just <clears throat> back in Lightroom and I'm using using the that's that's with a crazy filter. I, I made a I made a preset. It's very easy to make presets. I'm gonna make a video on about how to make presets. It's just very simple. It's a couple clicks of a button. And if you got multiple photos and you want so the photos to look a certain way, you can just make a quick preset and that's done and over with. Boom, boom, boom. I don't use other people's presets. I just make my own because I love editing. But sometimes I want to select few photos to look the same way. And in this way, this is the perfect way to do it. Um, so I suggest making this uh, a preset for yourself. It's better than copying all the information down in the in the treatment center and on the right there, and then putting it inputting it in every single setting. So this is use, me using the the um, spot spot healer, and I'm just kind of healing all the hard to find places, getting rid of. Um, imperfections on the bowl and kind of just making it look more prettier um, as you can see in my beginning part of this video I used um, just a blue bristol board um, to add the, uh, some color to the mirror I also have another video that I use I show you how to use a mirror for product photography and I just think uh, the mirror adds a little bit more contrast and some cool aspects for the for the photo and I like the reflections. I like messing with reflections on, on mirrors and stuff. So it just adds a little bit more details <clears throat> and it's not overwhelming either. So I'm just using the spot healing and I'm basically just going all the, over all the imperfections in the photo. So you can see dramatically when the photo is really dark, but uh, you want to try to get the background to look as even as possible for the next step. You can kind of see what I did. So I'm going with a lighter hue. See, it's gone. All the imperfections are gone except the white blobs on the side. And it's very easy to do. It's just, and it still looks kind of pretty. That's like Robin, Robin blue. And so I'm just kind of going over the thing, the fine things like there's little imperfections and you just kind of get rid of it. And then I'm just pulling out the vibrance of the of the jelly bellies, me playing around with it. Remember, this is uh, now um, a JPEG, so there's not a lot of definition and information in the colors. Uh, I think, I believe when you convert it to a JPEG, it goes to an 8-bit photo, which is okay. JPEGs can be used for some things, but I'm not trying to edit this photo hardcore because I already made it preset. And, and so now this is me bringing it back into Photoshop. I actually selected the paint drop tool and this is me painting over top of um, all the imperfections in the background. So I kind of just did that briefly to kind of make the photo look like it's all seamless. And then I added, um, because I accidentally when I was painting, I got rid of the one of the motion blurs of the red gummy. So I just painted a little bit of the red gummy. You can be creative in Photoshop. Me personally, I don't really use Photoshop too often. I'm more of a Lightroom, like take a photo, get it as perfect in camera and then, and then kind of, you know, doing it. This is me adding a preset to the gummy bears. I took a picture of the gummy bears separately and I did one of each color and I'm cropping it. So it brings up more definition and then I just get more um, detail on each gummy bear and then you can see it's the So basically I went in and to Photoshop and made the gummy bear. I did the mass select tool. I masked the gummy bear, put it in the bowl and then erase the bottom part. And then the background, I uh, threw in another gummy from that uh, four gummy picture that I took and put it in there, um, did the same thing in mass tool. And then I also did a motion blur and put motion blur on that guy. And then, yeah, there's the final product. So I hope you enjoyed that process. So I hope you enjoyed that walkthrough tutorial on how I got this sugar fix of a picture and I hope you can see how this video can demonstrate how you can use your creative talents to get something very beautiful in the aspect of the 
photo realm and how you can grab stills from a picture, smash them together, use those effects in Photoshop or some other program that's very similar like GIMP or something. You don't always have to pay for these programs, but I suggest Photoshop and I suggest something like DaVinci Resolve that has that feature of grabbing the photo from the video. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you take something from it and you yourself can make something magical. All right, one love everybody and I'll see you next time. Peace.